similar event as Wheel of Fortune, Reed Rogers was a contestant on the show Jeopardy when he answered the question about a British tennis venue with What is Wimbledon? However, his response sounded more like Wimbledon instead of Wimbledon, and later Alex Trebek had to stop the show and say that Rogers would be docked $800 for the mispronounced word. In 1988, a man by the name of Patrick Quinn managed to win a total of $58,000 on the game show Super Password. Sadly enough, however, this was not long-lived. The man, Patrick Quinn, was actually named Carrie D. Ketchum, a fugitive who was wanted in three states. Someone watching the program managed to recognize him and made the call to the police. When the 36-year-old turned up to collect his prize money, he was swiftly arrested by local officers. Ketchum was sentenced to five years in prison for faking his ex-wife's death in order to collect $100,000 from the insurance policy and for credit card fraud. He also never received his super password winnings as it was deemed that he had violated contestant eligibility rules. Again, we have The Price is Right, but this time it wasn't all smiles. In 2010, model Brandi Cochran sued the show after she was let go during her maternity leave. When she told the producer she was ready to return to work, she was told her services were no longer needed. Cochran sued and won over $770,000 in court, but the judgment was overturned in 2013. Also in 2010, model Shane Sterling experienced the same situation when she was fired from the show after becoming pregnant. Genius or cheat? How about both? In 1984, Michael Larson managed to win $110,237 in a single game of the American game show Press Your Luck. The concept of the game was simple. Contestants would collect spins by answering trivia questions and then use the spins on a seemingly random 18-space game board to win cash and prizes. However, the clever ice cream truck driver noticed that the luck board would always move in one of five looping patterns, and he was able to stop the moving square on the board anywhere he wanted. It wasn't luck or random at all. With the help of hundreds of recorded episodes, Larson completed his memory training in just under two months. He was then able to dominate the show by stopping the moving square on the high-value prizes and cash amounts, which quickly added up to a sizable amount. Stop! Stop! Stop for us anytime. Stop! Stop and fire! Producers of the show tried to get out of paying him because his skills could be counted as cheating. However, because there weren't any specific rules against memorizing the patterns, the producers had to admit that there were flaws in the system, and Larson drove off into the sunset with his cash. Unfortunately, his small fortune didn't last long, and within two years, he had lost the lot, mainly due to getting involved in illegal schemes, and some had been stolen in a burglary. Andrew and Patricia Murray were contestants on the show Million Dollar Money Drop when they were asked what the most common password is. They answered with password, but show host Kevin Pollack corrected them and said the answer was 123456. Instead of accepting their loss, the couple did some research and saw that the 123456 answer came from an obscure website and that their original answer was correct. So the couple sued Fox for $580,000, the amount they lost from their dismissal from the game. While on the show Moment of Truth, contestant Lauren had to answer the $100,000 question from her ex-boyfriend Frank on whether or not she would get back with him, while her husband, also named Frank, was there. Husband Frank had the option to stop the game as well as Lauren, but they didn't stop. Ex Frank was then told to ask a different question, which was whether Lauren should be married to her ex or not. She said yes, and the lie detector revealed she was telling the truth. But the questions kept going for more money, revealing that Lauren cheated on husband Frank. Then she lost it all when asked whether or not she thought she was a good person, which was revealed to be false, causing her to lose all her money. 
a total reverse scenario here in the form of couple Gabe Okoye and Brittany Mai, who were contestants on the very first episode of Million Dollar Money Drop. The two were given a question. Which of these was sold in stores first? and the couple placed $800,000 of their $1 million on post-it notes, with the two other choices being a Mac computer and a Walkman. Unfortunately, the couple's answer was wrong, and down the chute, their $800,000 fell. However, after the show was aired, producers were left red-faced when it was revealed that the couple's original answer of post-it notes was in fact correct. The internet was extremely vocal in its collective upset with Fox, as they deduced that while post-it notes, under that name, were sold after the Walkman in 1980, they were first tested and sold under the name Press and Peel in 1977. So technically, they were right. However, host Kevin Pollack is on record explaining that because of the way the game is played, at the time when they got the answer incorrect, it did not even matter because the money winnings were not even secured at that point, and the couple lost the remaining money on the very next question. To this day, the argument is still divided. Rather than Fox offering the couple some sort of compensation, they were instead invited back onto the show for another shot at the game. However, in another streak of bad luck, the show was canceled before they could come back with a vengeance. In 2001, former British Army Major Charles Ingram managed to show the world how utterly stupid he is, all the while being made to pay £115,000 in fines for fraud. His crime? Attempting to defraud on an episode of popular game show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? How? by having his wife and another contestant cough as the correct answer was said out loud to indicate that it was right. Luckily, the producers of the show were vigilant and suspected foul play, and his scheme was quickly sussed. Charles managed to answer the 15th and final question correctly and had won the £1 million jackpot prize. However, the winnings were quickly suspended on allegations that he had cheated by using the help of the audience. After the show ended, producers began looking at all the recorded footage in an attempt to find evidence of cheating, which they did after Tekwen Widdock, who was another contestant and who was positioned right behind Charles, could be heard coughing and blowing his nose numerous times throughout the show after the correct answer to the question was read out loud by Charles. I would have thought that it would be Aristotle and Assis. <coughs> I'm, I'm pretty confident it's Aristotle and Assis. <coughs> A1, A1 or Craig David. <coughs> Could be any of them, really. But I think it's cricket. Uh, but I'm not sure. I, don't, but I don't think it's cricket. I think if I had to guess, and I can, I think can I'd take cricket. Um, I think I think it was Holbein. <coughs> During the fourteenth question, which was worth five hundred thousand pounds, Charles nearly messed up the entire plan when he almost answered the question incorrectly. But out of desperation, Tekwen can be heard coughing and even whispering loudly the word <coughs> "no." <coughs> Charles's wife can also be heard coughing twice during one of the questions, once she thought her husband didn't know the answer. Charles has always claimed that he did not cheat during the show and did not recall hearing any coughing. However, a jury disagreed and found all three guilty of fraud, and they were each given suspended jail sentences, and instead of receiving the million-pound prize, were made to pay over £100,000 in fines and fees. Charles was also ordered to resign from his position in the Army due to the scandal. For our last visit to The Price is Right, we meet Terry Neese, who was an avid watcher of the show with his wife. When Terry was finally a contestant on the show, he shocked Drew Carey as well as the show's producers when he made the perfect bid of $23,743 during the showcase segment. 
In fact, Terry had a history of perfect bids during his short stint on the show, to the point that it was believed that somehow Terry rigged the show or he had a mole in the audience helping him out. Terry insisted that his perfect bid was from studying the show's patterns and pricing, but others believed there was something suspicious afoot. The Dating Game was an American TV show which aired on ABC that had three mystery men battle each other with their own words of seduction in order to gain a date and maybe a bit more. Cheryl Bradshaw was the woman of the episode and in 1978 managed to weed out a serial killer in the lineup. Rodney Alcala somehow managed to remain undetected as a rapist and killer even though he was a registered sex offender. Prior to being on the show, the seemingly charming man had already raped a child and murdered at least two women and went on to kill at least two more and a 12-year-old girl. Looking back at the show now, it's very creepy hearing some of Alcala's answers to the woman's questions, especially when the 35-year-old said, We're going to have a great time together, Cheryl. Luckily for Bradshaw, despite choosing Alcala as her choice date, she never actually went on it and refused to go out with him. Alcala was eventually caught in 1979 after the disappearance of the 12-year-old girl led traces back to him. He is currently awaiting execution in a California state prison. It is estimated that he has murdered between 8 and 130 women. We're not sure what's crazier, this guy's creepy answers on the dating game or the fact that a murderer was easily able to get on a TV show.